The advice that we have received is that the University of Queensland vaccine um, will not be able to proceed based on the scientific advice and that will no longer feature as part of Australia's vaccine plan. There was the risk of false positive HIV results. There are 52 COVID-19 vaccines in various stages of human trials around the world. Based on the 13.8% global average of drugs that successfully complete human and safety trials, only around seven of those 52 vaccines will get to market. But by all metrics, the UQ vaccine has proven safe and effective in phase one trials. Its biggest problem is one of perception. Every other aspect of its development was going really well. We know that it was producing very good antibodies. The scientific advice is that the risk to vaccine confidence was the principal issue here. So how does a vaccine developed for COVID-19 deliver false positive HIV results? This particular vaccine uses a clamp to carry in the antigens to the body and that clamp has got some proteins that are shared by the HIV or the AIDS virus. People have developed antibodies to that part of the clamp and they develop antibodies with our normal HIV test. And even though it's completely safe, potentially widespread false positives for HIV would interfere with real diagnosis for that disease. The vaccine's co-developer CSL says it is generally agreed that significant changes would need to be made to well-established HIV testing procedures in the healthcare setting to accommodate rollout of this vaccine. Given that these problems have been found and other vaccines have progressed well down the line, the competitiveness of this vaccine now falls because it would have taken quite a while to bring to market market and there are other vaccines available. The government had 51 million doses of the UQ vaccine pre-ordered. We're still only getting 10 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine being rolled out in the UK, but we've boosted orders on two others. We are increasing our production and purchase of AstraZeneca vaccines from 33.8 million to 53.8 million, and we're increasing our access to the Nova vaccine from 40 million to 51 million. So should we see this as a setback or another step towards the right COVID jab for us. Dr Russell Basser is Senior Vice President of Research and Development at CSL's Vaccine Unit. Dr Basser, a lot of people are wondering if these are false positives and the vaccine works, why does it have to be canned? Yeah, it was, it's, it's a big shame. Um, the, you know, the Phase 1 data, that first study of 216 people showed the vaccine was very safe and gave neutralising immunity to the virus. But in the end, we felt with the success of the vaccines that have, that's been published so far, uh, with the Pfizer, BioNTech and AstraZeneca vaccines, and the government having access to those vaccines, th this shadow over our program would, had the potential to severely undermine the whole vaccine, the confidence in the whole vaccine program. We felt in the best interests of, of the community, it was better not to proceed with this particular project. How disappointing is it that this molecular clamp technology, which can potentially be a game changer, had this unintended side effect that ultimately made the vaccine unviable? Yeah, it, it's obviously disappointing. A lot of scientists, both at U University of Queensland within CSL Securus, have been working night and day, weekends. Their families have, have, have made great sacrifices. So it's really disappointing. Um, there is a bit of a silver lining. I mean, I think the one thing for the University of Queensland scientists is that the the CLAP technology was proven to be safe and, and really strong in, in terms of generating the, the immunity that we are looking for. And I know they're working away now at solutions to this CLAP technology and the HIV interference problem. But the challenge there is that will take at least another 12 months. So for COVID and the public health emergency, it's not going to really meet that, that need. The health minister tried to soften the blow today, flagging that we could have the AstraZeneca vaccine sooner than March. How much mm -hmm. sooner do you think? I'm just asking for mm -hmm. a friend who's missing hugs. <laughs> sure. Look, our, our agreement, we're, we're manufacturing under contract for the government and AstraZeneca, and, and our agreement is to, to supply the vaccine in March, from March, I should say, and, and we're on track for doing that. We're making it right now and we're going flat out. So, Russell, when I bake a batch of biscuits that doesn't work out, I pretty much have to go and have a cry in the shower. Yep. How is the team coping with this disappointment? You know, we, we wrap our arms around our scientists and our staff who've been working tirelessly and we, we make sure they understand our appreciation. I think one of, the, one of the things about this project is it's been a fabulous collaboration between ourselves and UQ. Uh, the sort of, uh, an, a sort of collaboration without which... Australia would not be well served in the way we have been. 
Uh, you know, and just bad luck, we, we missed out. But uh, those of us who work in the field accept that that's what comes with the job. Well, we really do feel for all of you. We know how damn hard you've all been working on this for so long now. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks very much. Oh, as somebody who is pro-vaccine, but kind of nervous about taking a brand new vaccine, I feel like this is quite reassuring to have something that is near perfect be taken off the market like that. Do you know what I mean? It's reassuring. Yes. Yeah, yeah it means they're going to do their due diligence. And just another example of why scientists are just the best people in the universe, because they only care about solving a specific problem, no matter who gets to solve it. The idea that you've been up early and late, you know, doing everything you can to solve this problem, you realise it's not going to work. So you say, you know what, we've got to step back. Well, there are other people to come forward in this space. And that is the beauty of science, yeah. is if you get to a dead end, and that's not even what this was, mm. that is still valuable because other scientists then have that and they can go off in other directions. But I, I really do feel for the team oh, at UQ. I yeah. mean, they, they yeah. have been at the vanguard at this. We've interviewed a lot of them over the course of 2020. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, wow, to, to have had all that time on it mm. and to ultimately lose out in terms of being able to get to where you were aiming for. It's a, it's a real shame. It's not a fail, though. This is the great thing know, about it. And the more scientists we talk to, they're saying that all of the supposed fails are just helping us in the next step. So that's great. The yeah. frustration for them would be that it's, it's not only not a fail, mm. um, but it actually was working. But this false positive thing just became a spanner in yeah, the works. Yeah, a bit right? of a PR problem. Yeah. From expert opinions to in-depth analysis and reporting, the project YouTube brings you the biggest stories from Australia and around the globe. Hit the subscribe button now for news delivered straight to your feed.